Ken, one of the issues we all face in the workplace today is stress. How much of an issue is stress? It's a big issue and it's a global issue. In, you know, in the UK, 40% uh, of all uh, work-related illness is stress-related. Yeah. And we've got something like nearly one and a half million people a year who are suffering from some form uh, of stress. So it's a major issue of, of, our, of our time. And, and of course, you, you, you feel stress. You, you can feel it emotionally. You can feel it um, you know, in, your, in your body, mm. uh, that kind of tightening. So it's a, there are multiple you know, results. Uh, you lose sleep, you get irritable, you can't focus. So we need to watch carefully uh, the nature of stress. Ken, what's the difference between pressure and stress? Is there, is there a difference? Well, I think that for me, pressure is something that comes from without. There is a, a new job that has to be done. There's a, a new assignment that I have to undertake. And pressure is good. Uh, I think we perform under pressure, but we plummet under stress. Can you unpack the difference in the context of, of working life? The context is to discover a rhythm for life. And that is why we have to put in place something that enables us to journey through our lives, our working environments, you know, the pressure of travel, of family, of just the day-to-day -day chores, paying the bills. Mm. We have to find a way of being able to work through this on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly what we're talking about, uh, about Christians in particular, because the, the Holy Spirit is the real stress buster. Mm. Now, why do I say that? It's, it's not because, you know, oh, I'm stressed, I need God. Yeah. No, it is because we're building into our very lives a way of living that enables us to grow in the power of the Spirit mm. to such a degree that the stress, although it's still there, mm. will, it, will be shaped by the overall rhythm of life. The message translation of Matthew 11 is quite compelling and it's this are you tired are you worn out are you burnt out on religion <laughs> sorry Pete. <laughs> guilty come to me get away with me and you'll recover your life i'll show you how to take a real rest mm. walk with me work with me watch how i do it learn the unforced rhythms of grace I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I don't know any other mm. recipe. This is not a self-help book. <laughs> um, these are the words of Jesus that are so powerful because they give us the context in which we discover a new rhythm of life. Mm. And, and the vision you're really offering it isn't how to survive a pressurised working environment. It's how to flourish within that kind of environment. Can you talk us through what some of these rhythms of grace, what does that look like for you? Well, it, it is a whole of life issue. And, and, and then let me say, I've had to learn this mm. uh, in, in these recent years. I think it's, it's a new way of looking at life through the, through the lens mm. of the Spirit of God who lives within us. Because what his job is, is to integrate the whole personality. Mm. It, you know, people say, well, it's a psychological experience, stress. Well, it is. Mm. It's physiological as well. You, I mean, mm. you can feel it, you know, you feel that yeah. tightness. Have you ever been stressed? <laughs> you, know, you feel the ulcers, you know, yeah. lots of different manifestations physically of it. Yeah. And it's emotional as yeah. well. Yeah. But, but we have to also remember that stress is spiritual. Yeah. And, and that's an important piece. Unpack what you mean by that, the spiritual aspect of, of our stress. Let's start uh, with, uh, with, the, with the words of, words of Jesus in the story that he told about the sower. And the sower sows his seed, you know, the story, some of it on rocky ground, stony ground and some on good soil. But there is a whole bunch of seed that is sown mm. uh, on 
thorny soil, where the thorns, literally the word he uses, the thorns crush the seed. The word crush there that is used in Greek is, the, is it chokes. Mm. Choke is not just, <coughs> you know, it's a slight, <laughs> slight cough, a tickle. It is a, it is a compulsive and a convulsive, yeah. you know, strangling. Like a suffocation. A suffo- exactly, it's a suffocation, which is, of course, exactly what he says happens when we look at the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of health, and the desires for other things. Those three things taken together are what causes us to choke. And I think most people could relate to that language of choking. I've often heard people describe themselves feeling suffocated at work, feeling trapped, like they can't escape. Um, what, what would you say to such people in terms of like, what difference does faith make when you're experiencing that kind of stress? Well, again, we must be careful. You know, it's not just in that moment. Yeah. If if you suddenly switch, dial the faith knob. You know, <laughs> so, you know I need I need yeah. I need faith. Yeah. That's not the moment to to be doing it. This is a building up of a consistent practice of day to day living. You know, These are the it, rhythms of grace. The we're rhythms about. of grace. Live each day with purpose. It's mm. it's it's each day. Mm. It's not possible to store these things up. Now, what happens with stress is the hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, yeah. get sort of fired into the body. And, you know, a bit of it works and it's, it's good and yeah. it's useful. But then something happens is that they start building up and we become compulsive. Yeah. I'm guessing listening to your body is actually quite key in this process. Like, for example, for me, I know often when I, when I go on holiday, suddenly I get ill because I've been pushing myself, not really living under would, these rhythms of grace. I wouldn't want to Suddenly. go on holiday with you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's my body saying that that wasn't a sustainable rhythm. What are some of the warning signs for you? Well, everybody has different stress triggers, mm. and we need to know for ourselves just what they are. Now, some of it is good, obviously, to keep us stretched and under, under a bit of pressure. But actually, when it is consistently always you begin to worry, you know, am I able to do it? Your self-esteem starts going, your doubt starts growing as to whether you're capable of, of, of working at that level. And, you know, a friend of mine who's uh, ran one of the largest banks of the United Kingdom, actually one day uh, at his desk, he just, you know, head down and he couldn't move. Mm. And, of course, because it was a major bank, they had to issue a statement to say that the chief executive had to take time out. And, uh, you know, he took three months out, he's come back much stronger, but also aware of what the, the limits are, of what he can actually uh, can do. And I think it's a kind of knowing your limits. In my case, it is if I linger too long and take things to bed with me. I, you know, it's a gift from God that you know, I, I, I can work and then just switch off, I, you know, go on to something else. But the warning sign for me is if I, if I take it on and start mulling it all through the night, that sort of tells me you know, something is not quite right. Because what stress is, it simply moves God off center in our lives and something else takes on that, in that place. Ken, can you give us some techniques then for when we're dealing with stress, um, how do we deal with it well? I've got seven stress busters. Um, As I've said, the Spirit of God is the great stress buster. Why? Because he integrates our lives uh, in the name of Jesus. So here they are, Pete. And the first of these, I know you'll laugh, but the the first of these is um, stay healthy. Yeah. Most basic practical stuff. Take exercise. Yeah. I remember being in the, in the midst of, again, a difficult transaction, and I made a firm commitment to, during the day to get down to the gym each day mm. uh, to, for, to work out for an hour. I've never been as consistent <laughs> since, let me tell you. And the next point is fight fear. Um, perfect love, uh, the New Testament teaches us, casts out fear. If, you, if you're settled in God's love, God's acceptance of you, um, that he, you know that you can trust him for the future, uh, then uh, he gives you the, 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 
the empowering spirit to be able to actually face those fears. I remember praying one morning and I was reading Psalm 112 verse 7 that those who trust in the Lord will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, mm. trusting in the Lord. Mm. I thought, yeah, great verse, no fear of bad news. I went into, into work and a boss called me uh, at the time and said, look, one of the major clients that you have uh, says that they would prefer not to have you lead the team. I was absolutely devastated. Mm. I was doing extremely well, mm. in my view, uh, <laughs> and I was gutted. Mm. Was, you know, why, why not? Someone else was selected to run the team who, in my view, was hopeless. <laughs> so I just felt this was just a crushing yeah. a time. And after about an hour or so, it came back to me that the verse that I had read would have no fear of bad news. It doesn't mean to say we're not going to face bad news. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It came. It was there. There's nothing I can do about mm. it. But I suddenly realized I don't have to fear it. Mm. So we, we have stay healthy, fighting our fears. W what next? Really have fun. Rejoice. Mm. Take joy seriously. Uh, whichever word you want to, to use. The, be joyful always, mm. we're, we're told. Rejoice in the Lord. Now, sometimes we can get very miserable and, you know, <laughs> life can be tough. There, yeah. You know, life just is tough mm. in many ways. But that's not the whole story. Mm. And you quoted Paul in, in Philippians. And the thing I love about the letter to the Philippians where Paul talks about joy so much, he's writing to a church suffering heavy persecution under the Roman Empire in, in this kind of Roman colony in, in Greece. So all the circumstances would suggest that they should have no joy whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, they should be miserable yeah, yeah. <laughs> and struggling. And Paul says, no, you've got to rejoice. Yeah. You've got to choose joy. Yeah. Um, so what's step, what's step four? I think you need an emotional break. Uh, this is not a holiday. An emotional break is a break where you, you consciously move away from the particular emotional trigger points because quite often that's what happens in anxious and stressful moments. All sorts of things trigger in your mind. And often in the life of Jesus, when he was in really stressful situations, people were around him. They wanted healing. They wanted a word from him. We read that he took a break. He went to a quiet place. He was away from the sources of, of those demands that were on him. So it's a good example for us mm. to take those emotional breaks. So step, step five. Yeah. Well, that's ministering in an opposite spirit. It's a deliberate attempt to say, I know that the Spirit of God is working within me. And so therefore, we behave in the opposite spirit. You know, if somebody's really, really in, a, in the midst of a difficult time, really getting under your skin, that's the moment to begin to show hey, would you like coffee? <laughs> it's, it's those little things that, that indicate that our spirit is what is going to determine how we are going to react to the stress that comes towards us. We can't change it, but we can react very differently. And our attitude uh, of changing uh, to that of a, of a different spirit mm is one that I find very compelling. And then I suppose the point that I think is most important is just taking control uh, of our thoughts. I don't actually have to let negative thoughts come into the whole of my life. I have control over it. Problem is, when I'm stressed, I don't exercise that control <laughs> because I'm overwhelmed. I mean, mm. I've got everything. I'm just piling it on. You, know? mm. you can't help those negative thoughts coming, but I guess you're saying you just don't grab hold of them. I think that the way to do that is firstly, go on a negativity fast. <laughs> I mean, literally, you know, start the day and say, I'm not going to say a negative thing and I'm not going to receive a negative comment at all today. Give it a go. Have you ever tried? <laughs> no. Well, you try tomorrow. Oh, well, oh, yeah. well. It's worth it. it. But that's the one side, okay? Mm. And then the other side is to take what Paul writes to the Philippians about and says, whatever is pure, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, whatever is true, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now, that is so important. Mm. 
Which leads to the final step, which is? Final step is praying, reading the Bible, meditating and worshipping God. You know, Paul says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with gratitude, mm. make your requests known to God. And I think there it is, you know, it's make your requests known to God. He's a, he's a loving father. He understands the stressful world. If you were to summarize either in a verse or, or a thought, how we can flourish even in the midst of stress, how would you... What would you say? The end of Matthew's Gospel. Surely I'm with you, even to the very end of the age. Those little words, you know, I am with you, yeah. just Change everything. mean everything. It yeah. changes everything. It changes life. And above all, what stress does is it kills perspective. It makes you think that you are the center of everything. It makes you think that the only thing that matters is what you're happening to be going through at the moment. And the killing of perspective is the biggest damage that stress can do to your life. But the person of Jesus who is there is the one that gives us the great perspective to live. Uh, not today or tomorrow, but right through to the end of the age. It's all I ever want to know uh, is those words, I am with you always. Thanks, Ken.